Nani da di da. Shaba minda. Pass me some syrup. What is up, my fellow degenerates? I am here. Motherfucker with an air horn outside. Are you goddamn kidding? Kevin here. I am finally here with the acronym Lunar Course One Dive Video. So this has been quite a long time coming. I've been teasing it. People have given up hope. I've given up hope. But fuck it. I'm gonna just do it right here, right now. Let's do. It. Let's do it. Right. I'm gonna be looking at my phone because I have this long script written out, and I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna go with it. I'm gonna be basically teaching you guys how I did mine. And if you guys do want to reach the same effect, you guys just follow my directions and you guys should be able to reach the same effect. But this is just a warning. I am not responsible for uh, what happens to your shoe. This is a DIY project and sometimes things do go awry and I can't claim responsibility for that but I will have some safeguards so that you guys do not make any mistakes. And I'll tell you guys what mistakes I've made and yeah, let's get into the video. First part of the video is you need the materials. So the materials are obviously you need the shoe. Uh, the Luna Forces right now are going for like I think 250 to like 300. Link down in the description below for all of the materials and everything like that. Second, you're gonna have to get the die. So my friend Theodore used Angelus die. I'll link that in the description, and I use Fibbings from Amazon. Uh, both dies work. Um, I think Angelus has a lot more shades, but Fibbings is what worked for me and how I was able to get this like distressed look. So, bada bing bada boom. Next up is, this is something that I did not use, but I highly recommend everybody use, is gloves. Get those like big rubber, you know, your mom's gonna wash some fucking dishes today gloves, you know? Also, get some shoe trees. Shoe trees help maintain the shape of the shoe while it's going into water. Leather does stretch or contract depending on the temperature of the water, the composition, how long you leave it to dry, etc. So you never want to have your shoes unattended and not filled with at least something that will retain its shape. This is something that I highly recommend. This is actually one of the safeguards that I recommend everybody do is to get a test shoe. Uh, what I mean by test shoe is it doesn't specifically have to be your size, but you can just get like a beater pair of Air Force Ones or you can get a pair of Air Force Ones that are in like the child, like the youth size Air Force Ones on like eBay for really cheap. And using that, you can test your dye. You can test what color it's gonna be since this, you're basically just gonna have one chance to get it right. I did like a black obsidian, so I didn't really have too much of um, a hassle, but if you're trying to go for like, like a red to like a faded pink, or if you're trying to go for like a blue indigo or anything like that, you guys definitely should invest at least like 20 to like $50 on like a test pair. And you can even get like a test pair like super cheap on Amazon. Not Amazon, on eBay. Two different ones. Isn't it lovely when, uh, when a bus decides to just drive? So this is something that I recommend is I recommend everybody get some leather conditioner afterwards because through this dyeing process and the drying and all that, your leather is going to be a little bit rough, stiff to the touch. I use the leather conditioner to soften everything up and if you're trying to reach the look that I got, I did lighten some spots with the leather conditioner just so I could kind of like dilute the darkness, etc. And yeah. And last but not least, you're going to need something to contain both of these sneakers. So you're going to need, I think I got it at Target. It was only like 10 bucks, but it was like a three liter like plastic container. Um, like you guys honestly just need something that you can submerge the entire shoe in. Cause if you guys are going to be doing a dip dye, this is exactly how you want to do it. You want to have like a solution, dip it in there, trying to get it soaking up all the dye and then take it out. So yeah, let's get into the process. So essentially what you guys want to do is I filled up my water with, you know, slightly lukewarm to like hotter water. Um, I didn't specifically have like a degree in mind, but something that's like not too hot to put your hand in, but also something that isn't too cold. I did this in a controlled environment, so either indoors or a place that isn't gonna get super cold would be preferable, because if it gets cold then the dye won't stick, etc. 
Um, so I didn't do any external treating. I know sometimes you can apply like have acetone and like a cotton swab and you can kind of take off the exterior coating of it and that'll make the dye stay a lot better but I just went ahead and just kind of dipped it. So essentially is I put the amount of dye that I wanted. This also depends heavily upon what shade you guys want. For mine, for the fibbings that I linked in the description below, I put about, about two, three liters of like lukewarm to hot water in and I just kind of put like the amount of dye that I saw it fit and I had a test pair I don't have it with me right now but I'll just constantly like test like whether or not the dye is correct and you also want to agitate the solution so that all the dye particles don't just go to the bottom and stay there you want the dye solution to like constantly be agitated so that it actually stays on your sneaker so that's why I felt a little bit weird making this DIY project because this is honestly just experimentation you guys are just it's just gonna be trial and error and how I achieved this was honestly through just luck and time. It just took me, it took me a bit, it took me a bit. Uh, one of the tips that I suggest is that do not go for more than, um, I say two or three dips. Uh, I made the mistake of doing like about like four or five and that really, really dried out my leather and I had to put on a good amount of leather conditioner just to like salvage the leather but now the leather's back to where I want it. So I highly suggest getting the colors right or as close as possible. That's why I also suggest test pairs. So people have been asking how I actually got this stained look on my back tab. So essentially with my, well, okay, like I did this with bare hands, but I highly suggest doing it with gloves, is that I put some dye on my hands and I kind of just smeared it on. So there isn't really a lot of technique to it, but I just smeared it on to the point and then I kind of left it for a little bit probably not too long, around around 15 seconds, and then I wash it off in the dip, and then it kind of came out to this like beautiful stain. I did do it a few times on this pair so that, I don't know, I, I just kind of wanted it to look a certain way, and after each dip, it got closer and closer to where I wanted it to be, and that's essentially how I did this back cap area. So after you achieve the color and the shade that you guys wanted, I suggest leaving this out to dry for about, about a day or two since the leather is pretty thick and it will soak up everything. I also noticed that the whole dip process does make the shoe feel heavier. It did make it feel almost like a third heavier, possibly maybe even like close to twice as heavy. It's just like, like it feels a lot more bulky of a shoe because I'm assuming just the dye got absorbed and like that makes a difference compared to like a white sneaker. But the shoe will get a little bit heavier even after being completely dried up. And what I suggest, at least that's what I did, is that I put this in some water, some kind of lukewarm water depending on how light you want to get. Initially I had this a lot darker than I intended it to be and then I put it in some hot water, kind of agitated a little bit, got rid of some of the dye, took it out, dried it off and then that's how you also not get any dye transfer onto your socks is that you want all the dye that's stuck to really stay in there and not be something that can be washed off easily. So. This went through around two hot washes to get all the external dye off and this is the final product that I was left with essentially. Let me know if you guys have any questions down in the comments below. DM me on Instagram if you guys have any questions as well. You might even get a faster response there. If you guys have any custom orders, if you guys do want me to customize your LF100s, DM me on Instagram, I'm sure we can work something out. This is actually going to a Canadian buyer. He was actually really interested in these sneakers and I was just like, let me cut you a deal. Uh, I might even use that money to get a brand new pair to just do a new custom on. Let me know if you guys have any custom ideas of your own. And again, I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Peace!